Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to WCS Season 3, Premier League Round of 16. Thank you, Targa. Always good to be trolled by a man from Dignitas behind me. Uh, anyway, serious business right now. StarCraft 2 rocking this evening. Four amazing games. Let's check in with the brackets just to update you, because if you're just getting in from work or you've had a long day and you're getting in, you're thinking, I know, I'll sit down and tune into WCS and watch some great games. Well, tough, boyo, because you missed some fabulous games. Uh, Targa already threw, as we've said. He has the gold place at the top of the screen. Right now, we're at the bottom of the bracket where one more man will go through to the round of eight. It's going to be Welmu or Stardust after what was an absolutely insane, bonkers game between Happy and Stardust. Can you put it into a few words of what you thought about it? Kalaris? Well, I lost a lot of the words at the end of that game <laughs> three. There wasn't really much to commentate other than two Marauders microing around doing what they want to do, and it was strange. It's, uh, I want to go with the weirdest series I've ever cast. Yeah, yeah, I'll go with yeah, that. Yeah, I mean, also enjoyable though. I mean, yeah, it, was yeah. str it was strangely, oddly enjoyable from my point. I was sitting there going, no, oh, he's killed one. Oh, it was like, it was literally like almost a mini game of slow death chess. Yeah, that, I, I thought it was just going to be the slowest death ever, but then Stardust actually, uh, in terms of uh, control in that in that high intensity situation, it's really hard to do that. Be able to leave just a few units back whilst denying the, as Grubby said. So, very it was almost very like impressive. it was almost like he had three keyboards in front of him, yeah. and he was controlling them all over the place. But nevertheless, fantastic. If you get that analogy or not, we've got some crazy stuff coming through in this evening. But we are into game five now. Now. I just want to reiterate this. We've lost Happy, okay, from mm -hmm. the round of 16, which is very sad for him. He's, he's been a, a man who's qualified all the way through all the three different seasons as well. It's also pretty much the end of his dream for BlizzCon, even though it was only an outside dream. But the two men left are in a similar position. They both need this win to go through to the round of eight to keep that kind of BlizzCon outside dream alive. So we've already had one game. We saw Wellmu dominate that game against Stardust. Mm. First time they played each other as well. But Stardust has got a bit of form here, hasn't he? Because, of course, in the round of 32, he lost his opening game and then came back and won it. So are we going to see the same pattern here, or does Wellmu hold for Europe? We certainly could do. Um, again, in, in PvP especially, there's a lot of adaptation that can come out from Stardust that works really nicely. Uh, I keep harking on about it, but uh, during that uh, series against Hero at DreamHack that wasn't actually broadcast, I went back and looked at the uh, kind of uh, what happened in those games, and Stardust noticed that Hero in the first two games wasn't scouting at all. So he, in game number three, was like, right, well, I'm just going to go Nexus first. And there's like, you're not going to spot it or anything like that. So Stardust is a guy that can go for wildly uh, wild risks, but he, they're calculated risks, which is what makes him really dangerous. Yeah. OK, well, we are ready for the final game of Group A. Which man goes through to the quarterfinals alongside the Norwegian Targa? Is it Wellmu? Or is it Stardust? We're about to find out. Here's our commentary team for our final game of the evening. It's Apollo and Grubby. Well, thank you very much, Red Eye, and welcome back over here to the commentary desk. And we're in for our final game of the evening. Another Protoss versus Protoss, the same as before the rematch of these two players from earlier on. Yeah, and uh, there was always a chance that this was going to happen. I was in the same situation last season in WCS. I was against Hassops first, and I was pretty confident that... Mm. Both of us would beat Red, but lose to MVP. So it was going to happen again. Now this is happening, which means that if you could see that happening, you would need up to six PvP strategies. That's a lot of variants. So we don't really know what's going to happen. Repeating strategies in PvP is a little bit less common even than in the other matchups. Well, I'd like to just quote you from earlier on, Grubby, because at the start of the show, one thing you mentioned is that Wellmu probably is the more solid and more fundamentally based player when it comes to this matchup and this matchup between the players specifically. And Stardust is a guy with variety. Then surely meeting twice in the same day would go in a slight favor towards Stardust having known how well Moon likes to play. Yeah, I would say you're you're probably right with that. Uh, of course, after I lost to Hassops too, same thing. I mean, mm. I don't want to talk about myself, but probably the same thing. Like, uh, you're going to think, if I meet this guy again, I'm going to do it like so. And a little bit more thinking times than the time between two maps mm. might do it for you. However, he just had a pretty grueling series against Happy. So he had something else on his mind. Now, interestingly, we're moving whirlwind. Yeah, yeah, I was looking at that as well. Wellmoose map of choice before. 
Yonsu is removed. Before, Stardust removed Frost Polar Knight. That's right, yeah. Because Korea is so cold. And <laughs> Welmu now removes Polar Knight, so he was happy with the Polar Knight removal early, and he's still removing Akalon. <laughs> the maps they're playing. <laughs> <laughs> Friendly banter before it all begins, of course. Imagine one of them has like a sprained wrist. Like the <laughs> other has like special <laughs> well, I can't believe you did that to me. <laughs> yeah. Oh no. Yeah. And then smiling so satisfiedly about it. Would I be are. a bit callous. Derelict Watcher though still remains in there, which was... Um, yeah, okay. Was that, that was Stardust pick initially, but that was also the first map that we saw Wellmo pick up on. Right. And uh, to take the, take the lead in the... Initial series. And Whirlwind was second. Would Belcher mm. have been last? I yes. think, yeah, Belcher was last because I remember you saying it was the most all round map to, to kind of. Now it's first. Finish it up. Yeah. So, so they're actually, if they were to play all three games from the first best of three, yeah. we're actually going to see how This is what would have happened, guys. <laughs> <laughs> so Belcher first, then Derelict, which is the, obviously in the map that we uh, saw Wilma pick up as first, and then Frost towards the end. I would feel very nervous having Frost as the last map to decide. Mm. Because the possibilities are so uh, big. Mm. <laughs> big. They are really endless. Yeah, I wanted to say endless. I was thinking, is it literally endless? It's like, no, not <laughs> really. <laughs> Billions, maybe, yeah. But anyway, uh, there are a lot of possibilities on Frost, so it's kind of hard to go into this and say, yeah, I envision exactly how it's going to go down. I, I know what's going to happen. It's kind of like you get in there, you kind of choose your opening build, then you improvise. All right, well, here's Wellmu again. If you didn't meet him before and you don't know who he is, here he is once again. A player very aggressive playstyle. F focus very heavily on the harassment in some of the other matchups. Mm. Yeah. Is learning a lot, let's say, in Protoss versus Protoss in recent times. Luckily for him, it's one of his favorite matchups. It's not the favorite matchup. And he's had the chance to play time after time after time after time. All season two, full of all the Protoss players we had. He got a lot of learning and experience from the likes of MC and Rain at the season two finals as well. And the funny thing is, anytime you're having a conversation about PvP, Wilmo always comes up, in Europe that is. Mm. When people think about you know, learning how to play PvP, they often look at Wilmo, and he doesn't have a crazy diversity of strategies. It's the DTs, it's the expansion, it's just the way he plays it, which is so sound and solid. I don't see him opening a lot with like Phoenixes and then Blink all in and so on. It's solid, that's mm. why it's solid. And uh, his one-two losses against uh, Rain and MC in the Globals, Rain and MC, they were playing even better than they usually do. Um, they were both playing very strong, but uh, Wilmu, he looked solid in all of them. Don't even only look at the score, which is close. 1-2 is, of course, the closest score possible in the best of three. The way it looked like was very solid. Like, he didn't get fully routed. He didn't get embarrassed. It was just like, yeah, he lost. He was just a little bit less good. So uh, he's bringing a lot of strength to the table here. Well, let's see if he can continue to bring that strength to the table. Stardust just come off a big, big win here. Yeah. Or should I say a long, long win uh, <laughs> against Happy and is now coming back to the table, coming back to play once again here in this PvP. We're about ready to begin this. This is going to be the last series of the evening. One final best of three to determine who joins Dignitas Targa in the round of eight. The first two players to make it to the quarterfinals here in the World Championship Series as things are now ready. And for the last time, or the first time in this best of series, last time overall, down here in the bottom right, playing for Neurosoft from Finland, it's Wellmu. One, two, zero earlier on today against this player to the top left. As the blue Protoss, playing for my insanity, can he do it? His name is Stardust. The epic music plays as we introduce the players, Grobby. So cool. It's hype, hype, hype. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Or as Scooter said, hyper, hyper. <laughs> hyper, hyper. Ah, very cool. So, still got a very loud crowd here, even at this late hour. Thanks for being here, guys, our live audience. A lot of endurance. A lot of endurance. My mother was here earlier. Yeah. She already went home. I met her. She's famous. I saw her in a BenQ video. <laughs> She said, what's the big unit that the red one has, Targa? It's like, it took me a long time to find the out. Yeah, they're around the, they're around the crystals. Oh. Like, oh, that's, that's a hatchery. Zerg buildings are alive. Oh. And she's like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, then why are they building? I bet she knows a lot about Warcraft 3, though, doesn't she? Yeah, she knew a lot about Warcraft 3. Yeah. But uh, it's hard to keep up with the kids these days, jumping from game to game. Oh, you guys. <laughs> 
Oh. All right, double gas opening here from Wellmu, okay. uh, which is kind of normal. We do see this very, very often from him. He loves to play with gas. He loves gas. Yeah. Uh, Stardust, on the other hand, though, probably going to be taking a second gas, but hasn't decided to get it earlier on. Uh, uh, usually, the likelihood is just after that cyber core is down. Yeah, and it's, it's kind of funny, because like, if you do gas into core into second gas, mm. your core is literally about, literally about three, four seconds faster. And it means that probably you'll start with a Zealot. If you're going to start with the Zealot anyway, you have a little bit more Reynolds early, you can afford that while still affording probes and pylon and, and so on. You get a little bit less gas. Usually an opening like this, when I play it, mm -hmm. it leads to, um, to a Twilight Council with Blink. The Zealot, Stalker, Mothership Core, Twilight, Second Stalker, plus two gates. It's, uh, that's, that's usually how you see it open. But it's, just, it's because you don't have as much gas as when you open with two gases. It can also mean uh, one gate expansion, which mm -hmm. I think wouldn't be so weird coming from Stardust now, considering the games that they've had in the series they played earlier on in this group. All right, well, so far he's added on the Mothership Koran Stalker, so so far he's following that pattern towards where you described. On the other hand, though, Wellmu has thrown down a second gateway and has also chrono-boosted into the Cyber Core twice, I think, now that is. So, uh, uh, bless you. Thanks. Uh, <laughs> he is rushing down his Cybernetics Core. Uh, or at least a research for it, and the Mothership Core behind it. Robotics Facility, Whoa. so not the Twilight Council, but it is a tech choice. As you said, Zalit Mothership Core, then Stalker, and then the Robotics Facility. So this build, I call it the one gate pressure into Robo. The the way that it works is like you make quick four units, Zealot, Double Stalkers, and Mothership Core. You pressure, you get information. If it's a Stargate play, a risky mm. Stargate, those units are enough to do a lot of damage. Maybe force a Photon Overcharge, maybe kill some probes. If it's not a Stargate, Robo's fine. Robo's good against Blink, DT, and against Expansion. So that's kind of how it works. You're still most sad if they have a safe Stargate build. But uh, Wellmu usually doesn't do like kind of safe Stargate build. There we go. Zealot already getting one probe kill, second Two. probe kill. Wow, and a oh third. Oh my god. And on top of this, he's got all this information. He's trying to get a fourth and oh. gets a fourth. Four probe kills, all this information already. By the way, we did see Wilmu slip a probe out. He actually danced with it because the Mothership Core's crossed. And he actually danced with the probe. It wasn't displayed, but upon seeing three gateways down already on, I'm sure he may be thinking about this, but that's a good start here. Very, very good start. And it's good to use that kind of strategy where you try to kill the opponent's probes later in the day rather than early. When, uh, when the spirit isn't so ardent anymore, when people aren't so awake anymore. I mean, Wilmu, he could have saved every probe. He could have moved him away, but he's tired, man. But here we go, counter attack. This is a very smart mm. counter attack. Four stalkers. There was the time warp available and was not used here. It is now used. But the Mothership Core is about to come back here from Stardust. It is seconds away from coming back into the fight, but a little bit late. It does throw down the Photon Overcharge. Unfortunately, it sacrifices his life to do so. But it allows Stardust ultimately to survive. Yeah. The ult uh, not the Ultralis. You got me going now with that Ultralis I was talking about before. The Immortal, which <laughs> would play the role of an Ultralis against stalkers here is out a sentry there as well to cut this up if he was a, even an attempt to come up here yeah and this is a difficult position for well movie i mean he's got to contain that's what he has what he doesn't have is a pro lead. he doesn't have the better army and mm. he has the same tech and infrastructure okay there we go he's going back with uh, the probe uh, the probe count he's at 25 against 26 remaking mm. his mothership core too stardust is not remaking his mothership core yet kind of interesting after the second immortal, you think he's going to go for a war prison to try and bust out, maybe counterattack? Uh, it's very highly likely here because he's kind of stuck, right? <laughs> he's, in yeah. a, he's in a bit of a pickle because obviously he's not going to really break down this too fast. It has now started. Good call there, Grubby. And we'll see how this is going to work out. He's scouted out quite a lot, if I'm not mistaken, with the observer on the other side of the map. He hasn't spotted the Nexus precisely, but in this position, it's very likely your opponent's going to try to keep you inside your base while taking his second. Yeah. But how is his counterattack going to fare? If, what happens if it gets spotted if he's trying to lift out? So it's, it's very key to have a, uh, a pylon on the, the high ground, which can warp down because it kind of speeds up the whole mm. ferrying process. You've got some units down there already. And now it's just like, well, OK, you don't have units on my ramp anymore. He's going to attack. Now, let's take a look at the Mothership Core for Wellmo. It's 89, 90 now, 91. And the Nexus is going to finish by the time that Stardust arrives. Does he have enough time to hold on? He's down in supply at the moment, but the Mothership Core will give him time 
But does he have the time and does he have the units? There's two Immortals to nothing. The yeah. first one's just about to pop out. And it's going to be an attack not in one place, uh, Sean. As you know, it's going to be in two places. We've got the Immortal drop here. He's going to try and pull the army apart. Oh. What if he gets a force field on the road? I was thinking the same thing, man. That Nexus would be rendered completely useless. But so far, Welmu is in position. He hasn't Weird been force out. And I think he's realized exactly what's going on now. See, Welmu's an excellent player. He knows how this is going to go down. Interesting. Choosing to guard the front so he can't get force field it out. And he says one photon overcharge is enough against this. Very interesting. Usually you'll see the photon overcharge coming mm. in the front. But he survived and he's kept his nexus. He's not been thrown out. He's bought enough time for himself so far. Immaculate defense once again. You and can really a see. Attack. Well, we'll understand how, how his opponents think. Mm, excellent play here. And with being able to hold on to both Nexus, clearly Stardust plan at this point. Wellmu is just escalating forward with every advantage he can possibly have. A seven probably different. He has more Chrono Boost at this point and more banked up. He's actually taken a bit of damage now to these uh, Immortals. And obviously the Immortals are very crucial in keeping alive and more so to do damage to equalize the game. But the Robotics Bay has been thrown down here, Grubby. Yeah, you know what that means. He's going to do probably a one Colossus six gateway timing. Mm. It could be normally, okay, normally it could be like a, a Colossus macro type of play. But then you would see a Forge accompanying that Robo Bay, as you see Stardust doing. So what Stardust is going to do, probably, Colossus plus one attack upgrade and Thermal Lance. And... Welmu is going to get one Colossus, more gateways, and go for it. I think. I could be wrong. Mm. Well, we'll see at this point, because Stardust has actually picked up the information that this is possible. He's seen the fourth gas being taken, and through Star all that Stardust can imagine is like, well, okay, I guess he's kind of teching up and kind of taking his advantage of his economy into a longer game. That's like how Welmu prefers to play. But there, I mean, it's, it's very difficult for Stardust to pick this information up. And is he not potentially in danger against this attack with what he's currently got set up? I kind of think he's in danger, but he's not completely devoid of having a possibility of getting more information. He's still got that War Prism flying mm. around. There's no Blink, there are no Phoenixes. The War Prism can fly around, and if he's good with it, he shouldn't lose it. Now, I think Welmu took those gases initially just kind of as a fake out, because the Immortals were there, saying, I'm going to go into the long game. But now he's actually reduced and like restarting pro production again. So I feel there's a little bit of a lack of direction in Welmo's play. I'm not 100% sure. It could be that he's just seeing things better than I do. Well, a big, big scout just came in from Stardust. Double hallucinate Phoenix scout everything from the Corona Boost to the Robotics Bay to the additional Gateways, which you saw with the Immortals, every single little bit here. And with that information so far, nothing's really changed from Stardust. He's still going along the same lines of building the Colossus, getting the Thermal Lands. And now a forge is being made from Wellmu. You don't really get a forge, you don't really upgrade yeah. your units if you were planning an assault very soon. So you know what happened here is Wellmu said, I think I have an advantage. I had my expand earlier, I have a probe lead. I'm gonna go quick Robo Bay and I'm gonna do a Colossus timing. Then he said, um, I have the resources, I'm also gonna get Thermal Lance and maybe do like a two Colossus with range timing. Then he scouted Stardust and said, wait a minute, you're doing Colossus too. And I'm a good player, so I'm not going to bank my mm -hmm. hopes on the fact that once I'm across the map, I still have a Colossus lead. It's probably going to be equal, and there should be no theoretical reason that it's going to work. Yeah. Maybe it'll work as a fluke, but do you want to put everything on a fluke? Probably not. That's Absolutely when he started not. his forge, and indeed, he was pulled in all directions, uh, as I thought, and now he's trying to play a normal game. Well, we do have a bit of a difference when it comes to both what they're aiming towards at this point. A second robotics facility down by Wellmo and the Dark Shrine. Interesting. On the other hand, from Stardust, he has not decided to do that. He's actually gone up towards the Twilight Council and now he's getting plus two attack in the Temple Archive. Completely two different tech choices. Yeah. But are they not in this position both going to expand anyway? Which means this is going to develop on quite long with two completely different types and styles of armies. <laughs> it's so interesting. Yeah, it's exactly like you said. Or did Wilma just try to fake a third? But I, I don't see him not taking a third, right? Yeah, he's he's going to take a third here. There's the proof moving out. He's yeah. actually got a Hallucinated Phoenix inside his uh, opponent's main base, sees the Forge Chrono Boost, he knows the Twilight Can uh, Council is down, sees the Temple Archives as well. So he knows everything, absolutely everything, about his opponent and where he's going. We've talked about how Wellmu is very articulate and very knowledgeable on this matchup. He knows exactly what his opponent has. Stardust, on the other hand, not quite yet. Doesn't know about the second robotics facility, doesn't know his opponent's tech choice and army composition. 
how does this now interact together? There's well, got to be a massive interaction. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, permutations here uh, being calculated by both. And uh, Stardust, he's flying in now. Is he going to lose that War Prism? Uh, it looks like he oh, will not. We got it away just about there. Zalat's getting in nice and close. And well, at least the Zalat will get cleaned up eventually after dealing a little bit of damage here. Now, interestingly, the, the Dark Shrine is done. I don't see Dark Templars just yet. But somehow, Stardust intuited that he needs the cannon. So there, there's the Dark Templar at On the, uh, top the right. top yeah. right side. Now, he intuited that he needs a cannon. He's already covered his uh, first and second base. There's a cannon in each base, so that's enough for a single DT. If there's like two or three DTs going into the Mineral Alliance, they can just power down that cannon and, uh, and have their merry way with that base. Uh, I like it. All right. Yeah. Is that my computer? I don't know. It might be this one. I'm not sure which one Kolaris was logged into, man. It's always Kolaris' fault, though. It's always his PC. Oh, it's this one, I think. Yeah? Shall, right, shall I just leave? Sure. Uh, wait, now oh. it's Sean, too, so I don't know what's going on, man. That was Sean lagging, too, for a second. Mm. Uh, and then Funker. Oh, like everybody. <laughs> Everybody's taking their turn. We're all just falling apart. I don't know if it's happening for the players, though, because surely you pause at this regard, right? They, surely they must see, be seeing something. They, they, they're seeing it. Oh, you think? Okay. They're just... Uh, they just hope it'll pass. All right, we're, we're all... Okay, okay, he definitely knows what's going on. Funk is now lagging out. Shall we okay. pause? I don't have the power, man. That's the admin power. Mm -hmm. That's the admin power. Okay, it's been paused by Stardust. Okay. All right, so we're going to take a quick second out. So while we just kind of resolve this issue... The DTs are around, Grubby, but I, I, I think they've gone somewhere. I don't know. They're not in the same position where they are. I'm, I, I'm not too sure. We're sure exactly. we want to talk about this right now. What if someone accidentally take off their headset? Okay, okay, let's not talk about this. I'm sorry. No one's taken it off yet, but I do. Okay. So, first game of the series. It's looking pretty epic. Both are developing their it is. tech paths. It is. And I feel like we're moments away from a possible confrontation or some key moments. Currently, it's so close when it refers to a lot of different things here. Um, but, uh, do bear with us, everyone. We we're just trying to sort this out for you so we can continue this on. Not too sure exactly what the issue is. For people uh, maybe from the American East Coast or maybe the West Coast who have just tuned in to our WCS Europe, welcome, Hello. guys. <laughs> Hello. Sean, t tell them where we're at if you, they just tuned in. Well, we are currently in the last game of the evening which is the final match of any any style of WCS group you've seen before. There are two starting games, then you go to the winners, the losers, and we're in the final match right now between these two players. We did have Dignitas Targa make his way through in first place. A surprise to many. Yeah. And now we are playing to decide who moves through in second. Yeah, happy in last place already. This is between second and third. Second yeah. guy will finish uh, we'll finish second in the group, obviously, <laughs> and then uh, he'll qualify, and mm. uh, we'll make it to that round of eight playoffs on October 5th and 6th. That's right. I, I actually looking forward to the round of eight already. I, I always have fun doing the, the WCS round of 16 and round of eight, having everybody here like yourself, like the players. Lots of StarCraft discussions go left and right between everybody. It's always one of the best times. Yeah, and that's going to be two epic long days of uh, WCS content. Yeah. Of WCS Europe, we've got the round of eight, four quarterfinals, then we've got two semis, and at last the finals. And the playoff matches too. The playoff for the oh, fifth yeah. position. Fifth position. Needs to be decided to go to Canada for the season three finals. Which city is it in, in Canada? I, I'm, has it been announced? I don't know. Okay. I'm not sure. Not quite sure. I think I may know, but I don't want to step on anybody's toes. <laughs> yeah. I, it might, may have been. Okay. It's in Canada, that's all I yeah. know. Yeah, it's a pretty small place. So. It's a small place. You can guess between a couple of cities if you want. Yeah, just is it in the French part or the English part? You'll find it. I think it's it. in the English part. If it's in the English part, you just say. I don't know. Where Canada are the WCS well. season three finals? And if it's in the French part, you say well, season three final plus. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Have you been to Canada before? I haven't. You have? I haven't either. Yeah. There's a lot of people that are in esports for a very long time that haven't been to Canada. And they have a lot of fans. Canada they, is a big scene. They've been desperate for events in their scene. Which events actually happened there? NASL was NASL. the big one that was there. Was there ever an IEM there or not? I don't think, no, no. I don't think any big tournament, MLG, IEM, DreamHack's been to Canada, just NASL. And they, they had a racking tournament too. It was pretty good. They're craving our attention. They are. And now they're go we're going there. It's going to be cool. But during that time, it's going to be hella cold, no? 
Uh, it's, when is it? It's in uh, later Octo later of October, I guess. Middle, late October. Yeah, I think Late-ish it, October. I thought it's 25th yeah. of October, Because the New York event is the week after this, or week and a half after this round of eight. Because well, just... that's around the 13th of October, and I'm pretty sure it's the week or week after that. I'm going to tell everyone for All sure. Right, I'm pretty sure it's around that time. All right, I'll let you figure that out. So we still are having the current issues. Everybody here in the studios is trying to resolve it. We don't exactly know what the hell's going on. Um, worst case comes, we can always resume from replay. <laughs> worst case happens. Yeah. But this is, I mean, I was really enjoying myself. I was especially enjoying your, your analysis, Corbin. You're, you're filling all my little information needs. It's easy to cast with a pro like yourself. Oh, or, come on, you know that. All you can I put do, a goose next to you and they'll cast honest, really insightfully. If a goose was casting next to you and it knew how to ask a question, I think, <laughs> I think that would also fit in. How about two geese? Two they geese? They could outperform us any day or Sunday. Probably, man. <laughs> any given Sunday. One's just quacking away trying to ask different questions and one's just answering. Yeah. We're that's not far away from cracking away ourselves here. Uh, we are cracking away a bunch of nonsense at the moment, that's for sure. But I do have a bit of goose info here. What's goose info? 25th, oh. 25th October, mm. indeed. You said you said 23th, very, very close. So. I said 25th. Oh, God we can it. go back and watch this tonight. And <laughs> <laughs> you can watch the mods on <laughs> www.starcraft2.com slash WTS. Yeah. Got that one plugged in. Yeah, very nice. Thanks, mate, for practicing that for the entire couple of seasons. Yeah. I'm glad I remembered that link. Very nice. It wasn't a hard one to remember, but I got it. It's a good website. I also remember the ticket link. The ticket link? Yeah, to buy tickets to come. Well, it's not even buy tickets anymore. It's to kind of pick up free tickets to come here. Yeah, you should. You guys should come. Are you? Uh, you can come you? talk to me and Grubby. Yeah. When we finish the broadcast, we'll go get a drink and talk over there for a little bit. Yeah. If you uh, do live in Germany in the vicinity of Cologne, come to. Uh, can I say the address? Yeah, it's it's everywhere. It's just the yeah. WCS ESL Cologne Studios. <laughs> come to Siegburger Straße 189. You're very welcome Nine? here. I thought it was eight. 189, Eight. yeah? Oh, you're right. Yeah. 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 Come, well come done, visit man. here tomorrow, you know everything. 6 you, p.m. You know French and German and addresses. Nine. And dates. <laughs> Nine. Starcraft and Protoss. <laughs> wow, what else do you not know, man? Not much. A lot. All right, well, much. as you can see, the, the players here sitting, waiting. The, the lag keeps popping up. I once waited two hours box. for lag to resolve. Two hours? At a lab. It was the the haunted MLG tournament. Oh, that was the which one was that? What was it? Dallas. Was it MLG Dallas. Yeah, two eleven or two ten. Yeah, two two twelve. Oh, so we paused. Was it two twelve? Yeah. Was it two twelve? Maybe it was two eleven. I think you're right. Two eleven. Two eleven. Yeah, yeah. So we paused right as Hellions were about to come into my base. And, and there wasn't like, resume from replay back and, then. And my me. observer was almost in his base, and I was like, hmm, I wonder what I'm gonna see. Battleships. I'm uh, like battle cruisers. Am I gonna see factory barracks? Anyway, okay. It looks like it's time is over. My favorite time, except when I'm at the dentist. I didn't expect that. No, I didn't me expect too. Dentist. <laughs> I, I don't know if you purposely meant that or it was the first thing that popped to your mind. The dentist. Some things just. I happened. thought you were gonna say the hairdressers with the hair that you've got. They fill her. <laughs> I said filling time. Filling time at the hairdressers, <laughs> man. <laughs> <laughs> I guess so. You gotta wait there while you. I colored my hair red once. It was a bet with uh, the four kings. Toto went blue. I went red. And the other guys went yellow. I've never seen the picture with you with red hair. Let's just say that. I'm very glad. I'm very glad. <laughs> Is it on the internet? It has um, to be. Come on. Mm, no, you'll never find it. <laughs> <laughs> it's on the internet somewhere. You'll never find it. All right. It. it looks like we may be ready now. Um, so thank you for bearing with us while we yeah. we talk a bit of nonsense. Uh, but you're not ready. So we can actually jump back into this game. We are going to be jumping in immediately. The countdown has begun from our admins and observers. Looking good so far. So we're in. Uh, let's pick up the threat, Sean. All right. So where were we? we? We were discussing the different tech choices that we have upon us right now. We have a, a player very heavily on, uh, focused on Colossus at the moment. Well, we see Stardust, not as much, but still has a few. Yeah, and we, look at the worker counts. We've got 68 for Welmo and 52 for uh, mm. Stardust, but equal supply, which means right now Stardust is the upper dog. He's also got the upgrade lead, but it soon won't matter anymore because they'll both be 2-0, and you cannot win a fight with just progress on your third attack upgrade. 
So uh, DT's into the natural here, Grubby. Take oh, down that cannon wow. very, very fast. And then the Zealots on the third base as well. And a recall actually comes in. A massive recall having to deal with this and well move. And there's no observer. Oh, well, you've got to be kidding me. There's no observer. Stardust observer is in the left middle of the map, right above the left zone Naga Tower. And oh, dearie me. Why recall on DTs without an observer? I think he kind of misjudged the situation there. Very and unfortunate for somehow, Stardust. Somehow, someway, Wellman finds a way to get to the middle <laughs> line every single game and is now in a big, big lead. 68 to 44. Very big lead there for Wellman. So again, it's going to be about if the first engagement doesn't end the game in Stardust's favor, that's going to be it. Wellman will go ahead. His economy is extremely far, far superior. Mm. Well, there's more zealots being warped in on this right-hand side. That pylon is a nuisance. Oh, oh dear. Oh. The maladies have not ended yet. Not yet, apparently, as admin does pause it. But those four zealots going to get into the mirror line once again here. Mm. And we are once again struck by this. And it looks like we are going to once again discuss struck things. Struck by a spark of lightning. A spark of lightning. It could be raining outside. We don't know. It could happen. I've heard Cologne's a very weird city when it comes to weather. Yeah? Very weird. It's something to do with how it's, it's in like a, in a valley dip thing and with rivers and stuff around really? it. Really? Something I would never have come here if I knew that. <laughs> Apparently, from what I've been told, I've experienced it once or twice. It can be really, really sunny and beautiful one part of the day, and the next it can be the complete opposite and tropical rainstorms randomly happen. Wow. And I actually kind of like that. Sounds like a scene from Jumanji, man. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, you know, it's Cologne, apparently. Dun, 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 dun. Um, what's... Uh, talking about, I was actually going to think a little bit about winter weather because I, I've obviously been in Sweden for a bit and that's very cold. Is is Netherlands really cold when it comes to winter? Uh, I think Sweden gets a little colder. Sweden is a bit more extreme mm. than, the, than the Netherlands. It's kind of temperate. Our winters can go under minus 10, but Ooh, uh, generally okay. we'll have like frost, slight frost, medium frost, but not like minus 20. Okay. Yeah. I think I guess Cologne's got to be similar to whatever city you collect or Probably Abs quite similar. Amsterdam that you're, you're from. You live in you collect or something that's similar yeah, yes, to that. Yes, very right? good. You collect. Oh, yeah, oh, I said it right as well. No, no. I just repeated you because it was so affectionate. <laughs> <laughs> it's you got Utrecht. my hooks up there. I was like, well, <laughs> whatever, whenever I hear a Dutch person speaking, there just seems to be a lot of... <laughs> Oh, you just said that you uh, love my hair. Thank you. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I'm really good at that, man. All right. We're going to get saved, not by the bell this time, but by a very handsome gentleman. Kalaris, please take it away for a while. Thank you, guys. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, struck by the pause at the moment. So a uh, little bit of time to kill and a uh, little bit of time to wait as well. Uh, thank you to our friends over in WCS America, by the way. Uh, just a quick announcement for you guys tuned in right now that we're hoping to go on and watch WCS Extra after the show. It won't be happening now because obviously we're running late. And WCS America will not start until WCS Europe has finished. So uh, thank you to the guys in America for being patient with us as we wade our way through this pause. Uh, Kolaris, uh, your thoughts on these two matching up? We talked about it earlier on. We thought this was going to be a, a straightforward game. Unfortunately, it's not turned out that way for uh, other reasons. But just talking about the two players again and, and just recapping people on where we are, because when we were earlier came through this 2-0, no problem at all, seemingly. Stardust has had to fight his way back through past Happy just to get this shot. But both of them have kind of designs on making the BlizzCon finals, albeit an outside chance, though. But how realistic do you think that is? In terms of getting to BlizzCon? Yeah. Uh, they'd have to give, arguably, the performances of their lives to do it. Of Certainly, they'd have to claim a lot of points uh, to get there. But in terms of how they match up right now, uh, they still have their headsets on, so I can talk a little bit about the game. Uh, Somehow, said it before, you've got to take precautions against this guy's DTs because somehow, some way, they make it in. Uh, and uh, right now, they've done some damage. So uh, this, this is going to be a tall order out for Stardust. Yeah, taken okay. Um, and in terms of Wellmu, I spoke to him earlier on in his interview. We talked a little bit about the fact that he has this incredible story that comes from you know four qualifiers that he, he played at the beginning of season one. Then he played in Challenger, had to fight his way through Challenger through different brackets and group play and all sorts of kind of craziness. Then he gets himself into the round of 32 last season, somehow squeaks into the round of 16, then goes all 
like Protoss Ballistic on us and makes it through to play MC and then loses, but still makes it to the season two finals. Then as he, by his own admission said, didn't have enough practice for a number of different reasons, mm. falls to MC again for the third time in three games in WCS history and then goes down to rain. But he put up good fight against both those guys, both 2-1 got a map off both of them but we said earlier on that experience now pays dividends but with the pause do you how do you think he, he can cope with that uh i don't think he'll really uh crumble too much under pressure or anything like that it's weird for the finnish protoss because seemingly every single really important aspect of their careers comes down to protoss versus protoss we've seen elfie time and time again have to deal with that and now well has been in the situation now two seasons in a row so I think I'll be okay. Uh, they've just taken their headphones off, so if yeah. you haven't Well, we will avoid talking about the particular game itself as they've got their headphones off right now. Um, it's an interesting time for the Finns, isn't it? I mean, we, we spoke a, bit, a little bit about this before we came on air earlier on. They've, Cyril had a great run at DreamHack recently. Alfie's had a great run at DreamHack. Wellmo's second season in a row has got through to the round of 16. What is it about these Finns right now? I don't know, man. I mean, You've lived there. What, what, yeah. what is it? Are they drinking something in the water? What is it? It's not water, sorry. Um, <laughs> I think that uh, Finland has a, a, it's a, it's a, it's a small scene, but it's a, it's a really tight packed, tight knit uh, scene. Uh, not, many, not many people live in Finland. It's a big country, but it's like five million population or something like that. But players like Serral uh, and Protossa, who have been practicing together for a long time, uh, Protossa was, uh, if you don't know, previously on Mouse Sports, no longer on there, uh, but he's the older brother of Serral. Uh, these are two players that are kind of overlooked, uh, kind of overshadowed by Elfie and uh, Wellmu, but still have a lot of talent behind themselves, especially Serral, who, as you said, at DreamHack looked really, really good uh, in his ZBT, a matchup that can be extremely difficult. So, um, uh, and I recently did an interview, actually, about the, the rise to prominence of younger players in the European scene and just how well-established and how, how, how deep it is. And Finland's a great example of that, because you've got a player like Serral, who's only 14 years old, who eventually, he will, he will make a splash, and he will do very, very well indeed. Indeed. Uh, so, right now, in the round of 16, if you include Happy, we've got two Russians, a Dane, a Swede, a Norwegian, a Finn, a German, a Pole, a Slovenian, a Spaniard, and then six Koreans. Yeah. Okay. Bear with me here. I know where I'm going with this, right? Korea, strongest European country. Uh, but where's the next bit of talent coming from? Because it seems like in Europe, what we've got is we've got like little plots of talent here and there. There's not one country really dominant. I mean, this, this you could argue this season, two Russians is ahead of anything else in Europe and six Koreans, obviously. So you talk about this young talent coming through, but really, where is the strength right now in Europe, do you think? Oh, um, I... I would have to go back still to Sweden, like because they have players like Naniwa, sort of still practicing very, very heavily. Thorzane's studying admittedly, but still performing pretty well. Not, not at the very tip top level that you would expect from a player like Thorzane, but then they've got such, such depth as well. Um, I can't really peg where the young talent's going to be coming from. It's scattered everywhere. Uh, and that's I mean, really Germ cool. Germany seems like a bit of a hotbed right now. Germany's good. A couple of really good young yeah. players, one of which we'll see this week. Yeah, and uh, also if you want to elaborate on that a little more, you've got players like Maus Marine, who is a scary, scary Terran player. If he has a little bit more time to go, then that will be good. But we also, ourselves, uh, in Britain... What, me and you? Oh, us, oh us, right, yeah, I got scared us. there. I thought, hang on a minute, young talent? Well, young talent. Yeah, I was talking about me, but all right. Uh, so, um, <laughs> uh, we, have, we have someone, we have Johnny Rico, who just recently qualified yes. for Challenger, yeah. um, who we didn't really see that much at the start of Heart of the Swarm, kind of took a little bit of a landslide because of, you know, changes in the game and stuff, but he's found his footing again. So, still more young talent, still coming through. So, Europe's, Europe's plain sailor, man. It's Europe's set. strong. That's what we like to hear. Uh, enough prattling on from us. We're going to take a very quick break now, but hopefully we'll get our issues sorted out with the pauses and get the game underway. I know that they're busy testing a game right now so stick with us stay tuned for the final game of WCS Europe Group A in the round of 16. It's Demara. I want to show you my mouse RocketCon Pure Optical. 
is designed in Germany in the Rocket Studio. All clicks, it's very smooth. Also, you have side button, you can use it in some games. Like for me, I use it for idle workers in StarCraft. We have the best sensor nowadays, Pro Optic R3, up to 4000 dpi. If you accelerate it even to 20G, it's still very precise.
Welcome back to WCS Europe Season 3 Round of 16 for the Premier League. We have, we have had a little bit of a break and people have eaten a few too many pretzels, including Carmack, who now thinks he actually is Demaga. But nevertheless, thank you for holding on with us. Thank you. You will be rewarded with a great game, I promise. It's going back to our game between Welmu and Stardust. Now, this winning game, of course, decides who goes through to the quarterfinals alongside Tyra. So let's get back into it with our commentary team of Apollo and Grubby. Thank you very much. We are now back and hopefully everything is fixed to continue this series. It started out very strong, a very good game from both sides so far. And we're about to jump back into it. Now we are seconds away from beginning. It's still map number one. It's still all to play for in this best of three. Remember the winner of this series will advance on in second place in group A here. And it has begun, Grubby. We are back yeah. in business. Game is resuming, still all to play for. And let's be thankful for the little things. There was not a major engagement one second away from happening mm. during that pass. So they kind of have time to rally there. These sellers aren't going to do much. Stardust finally became the wiser to uh, Wellmoose tactics and antics, indeed. Two cannons in every base. Well, let's just remind ourselves a little bit. Where are we in this game? Very similar army. Yeah, we Very got... similar to, to the unit T. But there's a big, big difference when it comes to the probes. Yeah, and, uh, and we look at the, the unit count. We've, yeah, we've got seven Colossus for both. Five Immortals, two Archon for Welmo, and the reverse for Stardust. But yeah, probes. We've got 17 probes more for Welmo, which means he wants to win the second fight, basically. If he wins the first fight, well, that'll just be an unexpected yeah. windfall here. Plus three, plus three has finished for Stardust. So if he can just get a little bit more supply, go max and fight mm. before plus three finishes for Welmo, which is only 60 seconds away from uh, finishing, potentially 40 with Chrono Boost, that will be good. But can he really force an engagement in 40 seconds while still having good positioning? Mm. I don't think so. Doesn't have Zealot Charge. That will affect his Zealots quite a bit, the reinforcements oh, yeah. as well, right? Yeah, he has to wait for that, definitely. All right, well, there is a DT that got rusted there. That pylon on the right-hand side, though, still has not been cleaned up. Uh, it's been a nuisance. It's been just the the, the, the position to go for Wellmove to uh, to harass these back bases. Yeah, and everything comes down in the late game. Not so much to harass anymore. Not so much to probe count. Gateway count matters. We've got uh, nine gateways for Wellmo and we've got six for Stardust. That's really low, isn't it? Mm. For this point in the game. Very, very low. Well, as both players max out here and they don't really have too much money to spend on them. Sure, we may see that happen as both players very close. Both with 3-3, both with Zealot Charge, both looking at each other. How is the positioning? Gonna happen. How is the positioning like? Who's it better for? I don't know. Oh, I think the Wellmoo's in a bit of a disadvantageous position right now. Is the, the amount of damage that's been dealt from Stardust Colossus. The Archons are broken through and Wellmoo is dropping in supply here. And well, he wanted to win the second fight, Grubby, but when there's that many Colossus left over. It's very, very hard. We've got nine Colossi for Stardust. There is a but DT again, there. DT's whacking away. There's one Observer for Stardust, and it's above the uh, the lower Zonaga Tower. Now it's rejoining here. That buys Wellmo a little bit of time. But how do you come a six Colossus deficit? Very, very tough. Six Colossus difference. Massive. Somehow Wellmo needs to buy time. Wow. He's got the money, He's but doing does it. he have the time? He's doing it, Sean. Zealot's going in here. They're sacrificial. Stardust is sending everything back. I'm oh. so surprised here. It's a little bit of a misjudgment of the situation. I remember that Wellmo has double robotics facilities here. He's actually building two Colossus at a time. And what we'll end up seeing happening is that supply race back up equal to Stardust due to having the amount of probes more than his opponent. But is he still going to have uh, the exact right amount of time? Maybe we'll see another warping on the right-hand side with that pylon to maybe pull him back once again. But right now, 162 supply for Stardust, over 131. And then now he's moving across. Yeah, we've got the army supply. It's double for Stardust. Oh, double. That's rough. 
We've got a fourth base mining here from Wellmo, and even if he loses that, maybe it's worth the time. He's mined a little bit from it already. Not really enough to justify the cost that he put into it, but Wellmo is just defending it. He's defending it. He's using it to gain superior positioning here. Not every Colossus is attacking Wellmo. Uh, but uh, the supply, I mean, the army size yeah. is so big difference. We saw Wellmu attempt DTs within that. There's an observer around. It's not going to work this time, Wellmu. One mishap, one bad fight in a PvP at this level is going to end your first game. Wow, I didn't expect the game to unfold like that. Yeah. But it's the risk. I've had a lot of games where, like that where I do overly much harassment. You kill probes, fine, that's great. You take an economy lead, but what do you use it for? Ideally, mm. you would want to have like 18 gateways. And that's too much for the way this game went. But generally, gateway count is where you really get the biggest advantage in, because then you can win the second fight. With just nine gateways against six, and particularly the amount of Colossus that were left for both, mm. it's too hard to win the second fight. Actually reminds me very much, Grubby, of a game that we saw in the round of 32 against you, against Genius, on Aqualon Waste, if I remember. You had a <laughs> economy Jesus. lead. You had a massive amount of gateways, and that's exactly what happened, what you just described. I even had way too many probes. I was like, <laughs> every time I heard a probe sound, beep, 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 I was like, no! Another one I built! I was just like in that movie with <laughs> Jennifer Lopez, where you come from? <laughs> Why I, are you probe? I remember casting it, I'm like, I think Grubby's at like 80 probes, guy. I don't... Is this a high amount? Yeah, maybe even more than 80 probes. Is this a special strategy or...? No, I, I think just... Grubby has like 20 gateways, oh, yeah. and somehow everything just continues to reinforce. It's like... 10, 15 DTs that just come into the army as well. But I think. I think I would have lost that fight if I didn't, I mean that game, if I didn't also have a very fortuitous positioning. Like he was coming mm. up the ramp there on Echelon Waste, kind of outside the fourth base. And I kind of traded well there and that's how my Remax could win. But if the positioning was better, in the end positioning is everything. And as you said, Stardust had a better one there. And that's why, uh, that's why he took that. All right, well, I'm sure that uh, both of these players now ready for map number two, Derelict Watcher. The map that Wellmu was able to beat Stardust on initially in the first best of three that these two played. If you are joining us late and haven't looked at the results, they played earlier on today, the second game of the evening. Wellmu took it 2-0. But right now, it's Stardust leading this series. Can he make the revenge match? Can he make the comeback? Can he go to the round of eight? He's so far done so well in the World Championship. He's smashing the Challenger League qualifiers, smashing Challenger League. And he's in the round of 16 right now. And up here, to the top right, a player that represented Europe in season two, playing for Neurosoft. It's of course Wellmu. And a challenger to that season two European representative, a DreamHack champion from DreamHack Summer this year, playing for my insanity, it's Stardust. Such endurance these guys have. Mm. I mean, you have a lot of endurance too. You're doing like long days of tournaments, 17 hour days. <laughs> this is really hard. They would just kill my voice. But these these guys, yeah, they're playing and it's everything Mental. or nothing now. I guess the, the biggest thing would be the brain, right? To be affected when playing for so long for these guys. Yeah. Just not thinking properly, making the right decisions. Yeah. And, and, and Stardust is making a lot of right decisions for someone who's had a grueling series like that against Happy. So I'm very impressed with these guys' uh, fortitude. And let's see, is someone gonna do something strange here? Sometimes you see some weird jumps mm. from a player and it's almost like they're screaming for help, like, I wanna go sleep. <laughs> let's just let this end any whichever way. But uh, as of right now, it's not happening. Let's see if they play as solid or if someone yeah. is losing his nerve and wants to just cheese all in. You got to be, if you want to be successful, Grubby, you got to be willing to sacrifice sleep. And that's what these players will have to do here. Definitely. They all must forget about that. But let's remind ourselves what happened in that game when Wellmu was the one that picked up the first win. Wellmu decided to go for double gateway, sentry initially, to go for a two gateway expansion. I'm so impressed you still remember the beginning of the game. <laughs> Stardust, on the other hand, went for a very, very fast, as you said, Stargate play. Mm. Didn't work out too well for him now. So coming back into Robo, this... Right? 
Oh, oh, on Daily yeah, Watcher, yeah, right? Yeah. Yes, Daily yes. Watcher. Last time they met, yeah, uh, yeah. earlier on today. Yeah, true. And so far, you know, it is shaping up with the second gateway coming in for Wellman. What is the first unit that he gets when the cyber call's done? Let's we'll look at the focus. gas. I think he's going to get Sentry Mothership Warp mm. Gate once again. So is that not once again leaning towards his favorite build here? There's the Sentry coming in towards an expansion play, and then the question now comes down to what the hell is Stardust going to do? Yeah. He's got a he's got a new try. He's got a new attempt, a second chance, some may say, on this map. It looks like he's repeating his build from last game. One gate pressure into a robotics facility. Maybe he feels like this works against the biggest variety of what Wellmu has showed so far. Against the DT build, mm -hmm. against the expansion build. And uh, yeah, it's probably just going to be pretty solid. Okay, well, the probe of Stardust has entered in, and he's seen the sentry. And as you described earlier, just by seeing the sentry in the production tab, you were able to build up probably his build and how it would shape up. Surely Stardust would be in the same boat upon seeing the sentry, yeah. upon seeing the mothership. And call. now he doesn't need to make the robo. So, I mean, where does he go down with this? Does he ex He's just expand, expand himself? Right away. I mean, like, why make the robo before the Nexus if you know that the opponent mm. is going to go for a non pressure two gate expand? Mm. This is what I was talking about on Whirlwind. Stardust seeing Wellmoose favorite all-around strategy with the two-gate expand. At one point, he had to decide this. He had to decide. That's saying, I'm going to expand earlier. I've tried mm. to break you a few times. It never worked. Your defense is immaculate. Mm. How about I just get a quicker Nexus? And now he's pretending to be aggressive. Yeah. Wellmo is delaying his expansion. Normal two-gate expansion time, 5.30. It's 5.45 and he hasn't started it yet. And now, uh, what is Wormwood doing? It's well, he's sending out Hallucinate Phoenix and a probe on the other side as well to figure out what the hell is going on. Is uh, is he attacking me? Is he not attacking me? And as you said, well, 5.30, 6.05 right now. 6.05. We've got the Nexus 80 seconds done already for wow. Stardust. 40 second delay on that. 40 second delay, yes. Good moves though by Stardust. Very articulate, very well done. And now Wormwood's like, ah, oh, you cheeky bugger, you. You've got down this Nexus rather fast. And then all of a sudden now, I mean, how does Wellnu respond? Does he just go into his regular game and say, you know what? I think so. Like, as long as he doesn't die, I feel like Wellmoot's going to be comfortable. And look at this. We can learn from this. Every protest who's watching this, as soon as you see you're both on expansion, start the forge. At least that's what Wellmoot believes you should do. And there he is. That's going to be something that will maybe allow him to get back advantage in this game. Now. There's two ways you can use an earlier Nexus. Mm -hmm. Simply take an economic lead and go to the late game and have everything be normal, but you're a little bit ahead in everything. Or you can say, I'm going to try to leverage it to do an early timing on you. A little bit dangerous because well, we had good defenses. Well, currently Stardust here on the other side. I mean, both players are trying to scout each other out and they are taking their gases a little bit faster here. Stardust with a bit of a supply lead at this moment, but he is about to go over to the other side of the map for the first time with some uh, with this hallucinating things to get some information. He is going to see this expansion, sees the gas has been added on, and he's going to go in and be like, all right, one, two gateways, there's a robo, okay, cool. There's the forge, all right, cool. And he already does have his forge on the way. He's expecting this expansion to be down. One thing, though, he does have a mortal production started much, much earlier again. Yeah. You've mentioned it before that Stardust likes his immortals. On the other hand, Wellmu, on a map like this, does not. Wide open in the middle. And that, at the moment, with the Twilight Council coming in as well, is again how he wants to play this game. Yeah, and it looks like Wellmoot doesn't start Immortals until he confirms Colossus production on the opponent. Mm. Anytime now, Wellmoot, feel free to go confirm Colossus production because we've got a Robo Bay coming up there. Now, I've seen someone, I don't know if it was Star, I don't think it was Stardust. I've seen a Korean Protoss make their Robo Bay towards the front of their natural. Yeah. Is that the kind of Robo Bay you want that says. <laughs> This, this Robo Bay might die in a mid-game harass or timing attack. It's almost too hard to believe. So is, is Stardust just going to use that to attack? But then his probe count says that he's not using it to go for a timing. He's just making it as part of his regular build. So I find this very interesting. Just building a building in a strange place like that? You can kind of play mind games with your opponent. What do you think? Uh, absolutely, I agree with you here. Uh, completely. Um, and, and it's so funny. When I, when I cast a lot of StarCraft 2 games, so much information is kept away from each other. But in this game, they've both got everything. They've seen everything. Whether it comes down to Stardust Scout and the Forge being Crudibus and expecting Post to attack, seeing the gateways being added on. Well, we've seen the Robotics Bay at the front of the wall as well. 
they've seen everything apart from each other, from yeah. each other's build and strategy at this point. And you know what this Robo Bay reminds me of? It reminds me of uh, a medieval army launching a siege on a castle and then lighting like a hundred campfires in the night to pretend that it's a hundred companions, like, I mean, a hundred units yeah. of troops, whereas in fact, it's just a hundred people, you know, <laughs> that kind of stuff. Like playing mind games on the opponent, saying, I am very confident in my attack and this is what I have. And uh, is Wilma gonna get affected or faced by that? So far, he's just playing his normal game. He's not really yeah. going easy on anything. He did attempt to try to take a third Nexus, but the probe was picked off by the double immortals mm. that were moving around within that warp prism. And once again, Wilma is going in and scouting his opponent out once again. But there is no immortal production, despite Wilma seeing that oh, Colossus yeah. has begun. So he's just going to be Zealot Archon again. Look how much gas he's got. 1,200 gas. That's what he does, man. That's why he gets the nine gateways. Uh, and as a, right now, he again, he has the nine gateways. We see the same thing. A bare bones army trying to secure a third. Maybe mm. the third is like an option. I've seen sometimes Wilmo, he gets the third, doesn't saturate it, doesn't make a single probe. So the Nexus becomes like a lightning rod. Let the lightning strike there, but it doesn't really matter. Like yeah. my body is unaffected. And then if the Colossus army wants to go and punish it, moves out, mm. that's when Wellmood like a... Swarms in. Yeah, like a rockfish clamping on the, <laughs> uh, on the, on the prey. <laughs> Well, so Sardis, I mean, hasn't taken the third Nexus of his own yet, and he has seen the, the attempt of the Nexus and probably expects this to be down. Possibly attack is on the way for Wellmo, very, very fast in this game. Yeah, yeah, that's true. You're right. He saw the attempted Nexus, but he hasn't got visual okay. on the confirmed well, he's a, Nexus. He's just about to send out one now to, to get that info. And the War Prism in the main base. Is there any defense there for uh, Wellmo? Yes, it looks like there is. Is there any way that we see an attack come out from Stardust right now? He's down on probes, he's at 47, he's added three more gateways in, plus two attacks about to finish. It, it looks to me that we're about to see an attack. But he's only adding three gateways. I think you're right, but he could have added a little bit more than three. It seems a bit timid. Mm. He's getting up to six, but he's not going to reinforce with Colossus, I don't think. It's just going to be the four that he has. But I definitely think you're right. He's going to attack. Now, he's trying to be tricky. The surprise attack is worth twice as much as the attack. Hello, I'm coming. I'll be there in 30 seconds. <laughs> but there's two pylons for Wellmo. Yeah, he's he is seen monitoring that. everything Stardust is doing. And this is not a surprise attack anymore. And now Stardust is just losing time. Well, currently the probe cat's 66 to Wellmo to 46. That's oh my massive. God. It's absolutely massive. That's actually over probing. And he's still making three mm. more. Do you really want to yeah. make your 33% income <laughs> advantage, or 50%, I should say, to be 51? That's yeah. not the point here. I he mean, well, we've seen the third, you see the lack of third Nexus. Look at his army value, 1,600 minerals of active oh. forces against 4,400 from Stardust. All right, all of a sudden, the Corona Boost, I, I hope it's going into the gateways right now for Wellmu. I really hope he's trying to build this army as fast as possible. He's Corona Boosting out the, uh, the robotics facility at the moment. But there's a big army coming his way. Uh, maybe somehow he could get to plus three uh, attack. He's kind of wishing that Colossus, actually, because he's trying to build two at a time here. Yeah. But the army is moving across for Stardust. All right, let's talk about this. I've seen Wellmu hold an amazing attack before against Finale on Newkirk City. Against Duck Duck, I should say. Yeah, yeah. On Newkirk City, using plus three attack and Archons, he beat a Void Ray army. Problem is, he's not fighting Void Rays, unupgraded Void Rays. He's fighting 2-0 Colossi, and his range isn't done yet. We need Thermal Lances oh. to finish. 20 seconds left. Is he going to get those 20 seconds? He's getting closer and closer to the army value of Stardust, his but the engagement is impending. This I mean, right scary. now, the, that economy is really playing a, a massive factor if Wilma, but time is ticking. Thermal Lance is done. Is he going to have a good fight now? Well, Mu actually is going to have to go up his own ramp. He's going to have to lose the advantage from having the high ground. But all of a sudden, Stardust will switch back down, but does throw down a time up to prevent Whelm from attempting to uh, fight oh, into this. These two Colossus on the natural are being chased by Zealots. One is going to die, another is going to squeeze behind the mineral line. We've got an engagement here at the third. And this engagement right now, the Archons powering through to a Stardust. He's already got a 20-30 supply advantage. More and more units getting warped in. And is this how well Moose season finishes in number three is Stardust finds the Colossus dead. And that is it. Stardust with a beautiful attack off two bases ends well Moose tournament here. 2-0 to Stardust. And he will be the second place player to move on today. Masterful tactician. The Chinese warring provinces uh, hundreds or thousands of years ago would have been proud to have Stardust as a war general alongside Sun Tzu. Very mm. good decisions there and his strategies. That's what really made him pull through here after his uh, initial loss against Wellmu.
disheartening defeat for Wemu. But very uh, disheartening. And you know what? Especially the way that these games played out. Yeah. He it's kind of a classic mistake that some of the foreigners make against the Koreans. Mm. Where you see the opponents forge, Robo Bay, and you see all that, and then suddenly it's like you keep probing, they don't. Very strong timing by Stardust. And uh, well, what can we say? He overprobed. He, he yeah. didn't he wasn't realize. Quite ready. And and you look at that game, and you look at game number one, and and if he was to review that game, would be like, yeah. Small differences would make the biggest. You there. know how you try to prevent that kind of thing? It's like you look at the mineral line. If it's like more, if it's like less, or if it's exactly two probes per mineral field, yeah. you're like, you're not gonna take a third probably. But yeah. he, he, he did, it didn't fully register. I make the same mistake so many times, my heart goes out to him. Yeah, well, unfortunately, there for well, we were representative of Europe in Season 2. Funnily enough, we look at this group. Two of the players that came from Challenger League are the two players that advance out from Group A. Remarkable here. And I guess, well, it's time to hear some thoughts from Red Eye and, of course, Stardust. Okay, uh, with the winner, Stardust, well done. Congratulations, you have made it to the quarterfinals. But I have to tell you, you've done it the hard way tonight. It's been a long night for you. Yes, very hard day. It's like the limit. The round of A to final. It's my feeling is like finish the final now. Yeah, so happy. So what is it about you and the games that you lose? Because you lost in round of 32 against Cass and then you won, and then you lose in the round of 16 to Welmu, and then you come back and you win. How are you able to do that? Um, actually, I don't know my opponent strategy, the style directly, uh, currently, because I don't watch VOD a lot for my opponent, because if I'm watching many VOD for the one tournament, it's waste of time because I have so many tournaments every time but I can't watch every player's VOD so I just make my mind I can in every strategy be play safety and then be confident and then actually European player have only one style in one tournament so like Kass he was play six times same strategy like Shishi first and then he was same, last game, and then first game, I know his the strategy, so. So maybe I know more than my opponent about play, yes. Okay, well, congratulations, we'll leave it there. It's been a long night for you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Stardust joins Targa in the quarterfinals. He also continues the streak of WCS Europe, maintaining that curse that seems to be in place, but tomorrow, it's going to be broken. Join us again tomorrow at 6 p.m. Central European Summertime for Group B. It is the Group of Death tomorrow with Vortex involved, MC, Baby Knight, and Thorzane all in action. But before you even get there, there's also WCS Career in the morning. It's less than 10 hours away. Rain's involved, SOS is involved, Trap is involved, Keen is involved. But before we even get there, ladies and gentlemen, it's time to hand you over to WCS America for Group I action. The defending champion, Paul, in action. And he also has a mega group of careers to get through. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. Enjoy the rest of the night for more StarCraft action. We'll see you tomorrow.